Hey, what's up guys? This video, we're going to be talking about strings. Oh yeah. And we're not only just going to be introducing like the super basics, we're also going to be getting into string special characters, template, templatized strings, how to make long literal strings, and going into some other cool stuff. So this video is going to be lots of fun. But please do me a favor and check out the link in the description, which is going to be a link to Dev Mountain, our sponsor. Dev Mountain offers classes in person and online in things such as web development, iOS, user experience, and much more. These things are really, really solid, and they're helping people learn more in a few weeks, like 13 weeks, than people have learned in two years studying on their own. So if you want to take this stuff seriously and you want to make sure you get a job in the industry, Dev Mountain is the way for you to go. Mention that I sent you their way, they'll give you 250 bucks off the tuition. My wife said she would help me edit this video, so for you guys watching, please be sure to send me that 250 bucks to help me get those headphones she won't let me get. <laughs> be sure to also leave a comment for her, letting her know that she needs to give me these headphones. First thing, strings are very easy to create. You can just say something like, hello? Why would I put my name as hello? That doesn't even make sense, guys. All right, my name is now Caleb. <laughs> And it works the same way as numbers, that when we call methods on this thing, it's going to automatically convert to an object. You can create strings directly as objects if you use the new object constructor. So if you said something like your name equals new string, and then you pass the value in here. This one here is going to be an object, and this one is going to be a primitive. It works essentially the same way, so I'm just going to get rid of this one, and we're just going to stick with the primitive version. You can access the individual characters of a string using array index like syntax. So for example, we can do a console log and what we're going to do is going to say my name and we're going to grab the third character using the value, the number two, because it's zero based. So C is zero, A is one, L is two. So when we print this, we should get the value L and we did. See, I know a little bit of something here. If we go outside of the bounds of this array, we just get undefined. So that's cool. Other languages will probably bite your head off. Depends on if you like that. Some people don't like the fact that JavaScript doesn't really do anything. Other people really like it because, you know, we don't get exceptions. One thing that you need to know about strings though is that you can use special characters. So for example, we can go in here and put a backslash n and this will be interpreted. So it's not going to literally print a backslash n. It'll print a new line character and go down to the next line. So that's one special character, but there's actually a whole list of them. So here are all the possibilities. I'm not gonna go through all of these, but they all work in a fairly similar way. You just put a backslash before all of them. One that I am going to call out though, is if you want to put a literal backslash, you just use two backslashes. So if we put two backslashes, it should just print one of them. There we go. The next thing I wanted to talk about is templatizing strings, which is pretty cool. So for example, in this console log, we could do some kind of concatenation, saying my name is putting a plus sign and then putting my name, putting another sign, and then putting something like an exclamation mark. So when we print this, we get my name is Caleb with an exclamation mark. And this is one way to make complex strings, but another way is to templatize your strings, which is a little bit cleaner on the syntax. You can see here we have a lot of plus signs. We have to open and close strings quite often. It can be a little bit verbose. So an easier way is to basically get rid of all of the, the, the connecting stuff. So it just looks like you would normally print it. And then instead of using double quotes, what we're gonna use is a back tick, which is the character right above the tab key on the left of your keyboard. So you put that tab and then put a dollar sign and then curly braces around the variable. Yeah, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a challenge to convert strings to this, but in my opinion, it's much easier to read. And now when we do a refresh, we get the same exact thing. So if you're gonna be printing a bunch of variables, I'd recommend using the back ticks and then basically making a template where you can plug in the variable name that you want to display. Another thing you may wanna do is create a very long string across numerous lines. You know, if you wanted to put the contents of a blog in here or whatever, I don't know why you would wanna do that, but just in case you did, we're gonna talk about how to do it. So we could say something like let text equal, and you might start writing this crazy long book. I'm gonna come up with something very creative um, yeah, I got nothing. So we're writing this crazy long string. Obviously this is super ugly and you know, we could put word wrap on which would help, but you might also prefer to actually just break this up across multiple lines. But you see now when we do it, it's not gonna work. So if we wanna do that, we need to put a backslash. And anytime we wanna break a line, we just put a backslash and go to the, down to the next line. 
So this should work exactly the same way. So when we print it, it's going to appear as if it was written on one line, even though it was not. So if we do a console log, printing out test here, you can see it prints straight. You'll notice this interesting thing here. And the reason that is, is because the line right after has to be immediately to the right, which is kind of silly. So let's try that. All right, there we go. And you can see the same thing for information. So we need to bring that to the left as well. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the way this works. You can see I'm even having a hard time getting this thing formatted right. This is something I really never use. But if, if you're into this kind of thing, go for it. <laughs> I would much prefer just to go up here and search word wrap. And then what's going to happen is you can just write your strings like normal and it'll automatically go down to the next line for you. There we go. And now we don't have to worry about any kind of formatting. Last thing I wanted to tell you guys is just a property on strings, which is pretty important and will come up later on. And that is dot length. So length is going to give us the number of characters in the string. So this is going to be a ton. <laughs> so let's do a refresh. We get 109. If we did name, for example, my name, we're going to get five because there's five characters. Awesome. So that should be a pretty good introduction to strings and how to use them in JavaScript. There's nothing too crazy about them. In the next video, we're going to go into some string methods that you definitely need to know. That's going to be a lot of fun. So please be sure to check that out. And you know what? Don't forget to subscribe unless you want to be like a jerk. Yeah, because jerks don't subscribe. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next video.